She is a woman of God that I know is always ready. She's always ready in and out of season. And when she comes and speaks, whenever she speaks, you have to reach over and you got to fasten that spiritual seatbelt because I'm telling you, she's going to take you to another place. You got to hold on to your seat. I want you to please stand and help me welcome Pastor Venicia. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Let's stay standing because we're going to pray. I'm just going to bind up some stuff this morning, right? Because we have the authority to bind and we have the authority to loose. And <clears throat> I just want to pray and bind up some stuff this morning. Lift up your hands all across this place. Father, we come before you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we ask God, Lord, for forgiveness of all of our sins, Lord Jesus. That you would have your way, Father, in this house this morning, Lord. I bind up, Father, the spirit of weariness right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bind up the spirit of heaviness. I bind up oppression and depression in the name of Jesus. I command you to to loose in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, I loose a spirit of hope, Lord. I loose a spirit of joy in here. I loose a spirit of freedom in here, Lord God. I loose a spirit of joy in here, Lord God, that there would be freedom and joy and laughter, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, that it would be vibrant in here with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you would set the captive free, Lord God, that you would bring them a vision, Lord God, that you would open their eyes, oh God, that you would remove the scales, Lord. Lord God. And Father, I thank you for what you're doing, that you arise, oh God, and our enemies be scattered, Lord God. Give them a passion. Let their hearts be turned violently towards you, Lord. Let the waters of the living God, Father God, flow upon them right now, Lord, that you would have your way, Lord. Touch my lips, Lord. Loose my tongue, Father. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost fill this place, Lord God. Oh, Father, let it be the brilliance of the Holy Spirit, Father. Oh, the tongue of the learned, the ear of the learn to speak a word to the weary in due season father we thank you father that uh, there's power in agreement lord let the oil pour this morning father let it pour upon my head lord and down father my chin and onto the body father nothing missing and nothing broken this morning lord thank you for freedom god thank you for changing turning thank you for delivering Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I was working on another sermon, but <clears throat> the Lord said, no, not that one. He said this one. Let's go to Habakkuk 2, 2. We're going to read three different verses. No, no. We're going to tie them all in together, okay? Habakkuk 2, 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Okay, wait. Let me stop there. Write the vision. Okay, write the vision. What's your vision? Is, what's your vision? Is your vision for your, for, to be married? Is your vision for a business? Do you have a vision for... Your husband to change? Do you have a vision for your wife to change? Do you have a vision for a good job? Do you have a vision to be a pastor? Do you have a vision for a ministry? Do you have a vision to, to uh, see your children grow in the things of the Lord? Do you have a vision to see your children graduate? Okay. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Okay. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 31, verse 18. And it says, I always take off my shoes because I am standing on holy ground. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of speaking 
with him upon Mount Sinai. Two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Right? Exodus 32, chapter 32, verse 1 says this. It says, so this is Exodus 31, 18 is at the top of the mountain, but let's see what's going down at, on, at the bottom of the mountain. <laughs> every time we're at the top of the mountain, there's always something going on at the bottom of the mountain. Remember that every time there's something going on at the top of the mountain, there's always something going on at the bottom of the mountain. Exodus 32, verse 1, it says, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. And look at the Lord. I love the Lord. I love how he did this. God was actually doing what he said to do in Habakkuk 2, 2. God was actually giving Moses the Ten Commandments. He was giving him the Ten Commandments. He was giving him a what? He was giving him a vision. And the Lord wrote it down on the tablets the stone tablet, God was doing what he said to do himself in Habakkuk 2.2. He was writing down his vision. Whose vision? God's vision. Writing it down upon what? Upon tablets. With what? With his very finger. And then giving what? His vision. God giving his vision to Moses. Now Moses has a vision from God. And Moses is holding the vision of God in his hands. Well, what was that vision? It was a Ten Commandments. It was Exodus chapter twenty. Verse 1 through 17, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father, thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. So he had a vision in his hand. Right? And he's at the top of the mountain. Imagine that. Have you ever been at the top of the mountain? Have you ever been in the very presence of God? Have you ever been where God began to speak to you and began to give you a vision? A vision for your husband, a vision for your family, a vision for your children. He began to give you a vision. And all of a sudden, he comes with that vision, all happy with his vision, on the top of the mountain. And he's happy. And when he comes back down the mountain, remember, every time you come up, from a high place, you're going to encounter a low place. Every time you come up from top of a mountain in the presence of God, when people begin to prophesy over you, well, every time they give me a word, I think, oh, Lord, when they begin to prophesy over you, because I'm at the top of the mountain when they give me that word, oh, you're going to preach to the nations, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, yeah, I'm at the top of the mountain, but boy, as soon as I get home from that service, I hit the bottom of the mountain. I was high up, and then I have to come way down because guess who's waiting for me at the bottom of the mountain the enemy is waiting at the bottom of your mountain they only have to wait 40 days at the bottom of the mountain 40 days and 40 nights for Moses to come back down but in that time while they were in the bottom of the at the bottom of the mountain who was at the bottom of the mountain the Israelites were at the bottom of the mountain. But in that time, when they were at the bottom of the mountain, they began to get anxious. They couldn't wait. You know why? Because they were in Egypt, and God delivered them, and they were used to having a taskmaster tell them what to do. See, when they were in Egypt, they had a taskmaster speaking to them. They had a taskmaster telling them what to do. See, when I was in Egypt, it was... Uh, it was I didn't think for myself I had a taskmaster of addiction. So that taskmaster of addiction told me what to do, told me when to take a hit, told me when to take a drink, told me when to peel, told me what to do, told me when to come, told me when to go, told me when to lay my head down and rest. I had a taskmaster over me. I was in bondage. I didn't have to think for myself. I had a routine. The routine was my taskmaster. My taskmaster told me my routine. But when I got delivered and I came out, that's when I had to start relying on the Holy Spirit. And see what happens is you begin to get anxious because you don't understand what to do. Woo! You don't understand 
what to do anymore because you used to do the same old thing. That's why when it goes wrong, we run back to the same old thing because we're used to it. We're used to drinking. We're used to smoking. We're used to fornicating. We're used to lusting. We're used to watching porn. We're used to doing all of that stuff. So then God delivers us. Well, what do you do? I ask the Lord, what do I tell them? What do they do? And the Lord said, yes, repent. And the Lord said, tell them this. He said, tell them to read their word. Tell them to let the Samson arise in them, and the Deborah, and the Moses, and the Paul, and the David, and the Elijah, and the Esther, and the Peter, and the Abraham, and the Luke, and the John. Let the Samson in you arise and fight. Let the Deborah in you lead in battle. Let the Moses in you bring them out of bondage. Let the Paul in you praise in your prison. Let the David in you dance before the throne. Let the Elijah in you call down fire from heaven. Let the Esther in you turn over your plate and begin to fast. Let the Peter in you fish for souls. Let the Abraham in you worship on your mountain. Let the Luke in you be the doctor and come with the healing word. Let the John in you prepare a way for the coming of the Lord. Let God arise and let your enemies be scattered. <laughs> Woo! Pastor John, stand up. Is Pastor John right here? Pastor John, let the spirit of Luke arise in you and be a spiritual physician and give the word to those that are sick and those that are bound. Pastor Lydia, stand up. Pastor Lydia, let the Esther in you rise up, the spirit of Esther in you rise up and begin to fast like never before and begin to pray like never before and set the captive free. James, stand up. Let the spirit of Moses arise in you, James, and go out and deliver them out of their Egypt and out of bondage. Pastor Richard, stand up. Pastor Richard, let the Peter in you arise and that you would deliver them and you would set them free and that you would be a fisherman of souls. Audrey, let you and your husband stand up right now. Let the spirit of Elijah rise in you that you would call down fire upon your enemies and the enemies of God. Woo! What do you do? You do what Samson did. You do what Deborah did. You do what Moses did. You do what Paul did. You do what David did. You do what Ezekiel did. You do what Elijah did. You do what Esther did. You do what Deborah did. Deborah, stand up. Let the spirit of Deborah arise in you and you lead him through battle. Through battle. Ooh. Judging rightly. Matthew 16:24. It says this, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. There's three steps in that. There are three steps. I'm telling you what to do at the bottom of your mountain. I'm telling you what to do when you start feeling anxious. There are three steps to do in the scripture. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. So you do. Sunday you come and you do deny yourself. But then on Monday you put your cross down. And then on Tuesday you're not following him no more. Look, all of these are as one. You got to do them all together. You got to do on Monday. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow him. On Tuesday, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. On Wednesday, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. On Thursday, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. On Friday, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. On Saturday, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. See, you deny yourself, but you don't take up your cross. 
And in Proverbs 26, 2, it says, without wood, a fire goes out. See, when you don't have your wood, when you let your cross lay down, when you don't carry your cross, why do you carry your cross? You carry your cross to die. You carry your cross to kill that flesh. But when you lay your cross down, you have no more fire because you have no more wood because you laid your wood down. You laid your cross down. But when you pick up that cross and you begin to carry your cross, you're denying yourself, and you have the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Isaiah 22, 23 says, did I give you that scripture? It says that let him fasten you like a nail in a sure place. It says that our Lord is a nail in a sure place. In a sure place. If you're not carrying your cross, how can he nail your flesh? If you're not carrying your cross, how can he be that, that nail to nail your flesh so you can be in a sure place, so you can be in a safe place, so you won't be in an anxious place, so you won't be in a weary place, so you won't be in a doubtful place, so you won't be in a discouraged place. How could he nail that, nail that flesh if you're not carrying the cross? And how do you expect to have fire if you left your wood down, if you left your cross down. You don't know why you go through what you go through because you don't carry your cross. You don't deny yourself and you haven't been following him. Oh. Woo. Let's read. Exodus 32, 19 again. So it was as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. So Moses' anger became hot. And he cast the tablets. He had the tablets in his hand. And he cast the tablets out of his hand and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Imagine that. He had a God-given vision, but because somebody angered him, because the people angered him, he took the God-given vision and he broke it. He threw it down and he broke it. But God came he sent me here to tell you this this day, that it doesn't matter if your vision has been broken. If somebody's broken your vision, if you've been hurt and cast down your vision, if your vision has been broken in ministry, if your vision has been broken by your brother, your sister, your family, your children, your workplace, if your vision has been broken, if you haven't seen what God has promised yet and you've gotten weary, if your vision has been broken and you've thrown it down. It doesn't matter because God sent me here to tell you this today that he has another set that he is only giving you a copy and that he has the original. Woo! God has the original. He's just giving you another set. You have the replica. You have the copy, but he has the original. Woo! Let me prove it. Exodus 34, 1 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Cut out two tablets of stone like unto the first, and I will write down upon the tables the words that were in the first tables, which were broke. In other words, the Lord's not going to give you the original. You know why? Because you might break it. He's just going to give you a copy. But he wants you to know that what he has written is set in stone. He wants you to know that what he has spoken to you is forevermore. He wants you to know that he speaks truth. And he wants you to know to wait, to be still, to tarry, to read his word, to stand on faith, to stand by him, to stand by his word. Because what he, don't you throw down that vision. Don't you break it. And if you have, it's okay. He has the original, and you just got a copy. Woo! Lord, give me another set. Come on. Lord, give me another set, Father. Lord, I lost my vision, God. Lord, I lost my vision. Lord, give me another set, God. I remember what you told me, Lord. But my vision has gotten blurred, Father. I need another set, Lord God. It's okay. He's got the original. 
Amen. Habakkuk 2, 2 says, before I go there, let me go here. The Lord took his finger and he wrote with his finger on stone. Just as easy as we take our finger and write in dirt. We take our finger and we write in dirt. It's so easy for us to do. God took his finger and he wrote in stone. And it was easy for him to do it. Do you have a stony heart? Do you have a stony heart? This morning, I want you to examine your heart and ask God if you have a stony heart because this morning, he wants to take his finger on your stony heart and he wants to begin to write his word on your stony heart so your heart can be a heart of flesh. You know the word of God says that he sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and he looks down and all are as grasshoppers. Imagine that. He sits enthroned. He sits seated above the earth. The circle of the earth. Christopher Columbus, I beg to differ, did not discover the earth was round. Isaiah prophesied that it was round. Isaiah spoke that it was round. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and looks down and all are as grasshoppers. So what does that mean, pastor? That means this. That he can take his finger and he can place it wherever he wants. Because he sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and looks down. He can take his finger and put it on your son. He can, on your son's heart. He can take his finger and put it on your wife's heart. He can take his finger and put it on your ministry. He can take his finger and put it on your business. He can take his finger and he can block. He can take his finger and he can divide. He can take his finger and block the sun. He can take his finger and overturn. He can take his finger and begin to make things move. He can take his finger and begin to stop things. He can take his finger and began to melt your heart he can take his finger and tell them no you will not do that to my child he can take his finger and say no I am the Lord I have the final say so he can take his finger and begin to prophesy in your life he can take his finger and melt your husband he can take his finger and turn his heart violently towards you he can take his finger and stop what he wants to stop he has the say-so. He has the right. He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and looks down in awe. Yeah. Truly, he has a whole wide world in his hands. Yeah. Truly, he does. Truly, he can protect because he is the Lord thy God who sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. Habakkuk 2.2. 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. You got to run. But before you start running in your vision, this is what you need to do. You need to take your vision down. I have a vision somewhere written on here. Here it is. My vision is as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That, that's my vision, Joshua 24, 15. I even bought a, a, a beautiful picture that says that. And it says to run in it. But before you can run in it, you got to do this. you got to run your eyes through it daily. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. As for me, until it gets down in your spirit. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Until you start believing it. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. What am I doing right now? I'm running my eyes through it. Then you take your finger and you begin to run your finger in it. And then you begin to say, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And after a while, after you tarried, after you waited, then what happens? After you ran your eyes through it, after you ran your finger through it, then what happens? You begin to take your vision and you begin to run in your vision. You begin to walk in your vision. You begin to run in it. No more is it just a vision, but now it's reality. Why? Because I ran my eyes through it. I ran my finger through it. My heart got in it and I believed it and now I'm running with my vision. Woo. Mm. 
see my vision? Can you see it? You see it. You see it, right? OK. Do you see it now? Do you see it? It doesn't matter to me if you see it or not, because guess what? I already wrote it down, and I already know it's there. Because some won't see it. Some won't understand it. Some won't believe it. Some will reject it. Some will dislike you. It doesn't matter, because you've already written it down. And what happens? And what happens when the devil comes and tries to destroy and crumble your vision? What happens? It doesn't matter, people of God, because you already wrote it down, and the Lord has the original. This is just a copy. You've already wrote it down, and we already know it's there. What happens if the devil begins to stomp all over it, all over what looks like what God had said? You know you heard God, and it don't matter, people of God, because God has the original. You already wrote it. You ran your eyes through it. You ran your fingers through it, and you already know it's there. Yeah. My vision. That's how it looks sometimes. That's how it looks sometimes when all hell breaks loose. Come on. But guess what? If the enemy was before me and he was trying to speak to me, but I had my eyes fixed on the vision, guess what? He's not going to move me. He's not going to block me. He's not going to stop me. Why? Because I have my eyes on the vision, and why? Because I can't see him, why? Because I believe what God has spoken to me. I have my vision, and God has displayed it before me. Now it's written on the tablets of my heart. You can speak, enemy, but I'm not going to listen, why? Because I can't see you anyways, why? Because I have the vision in my hand. But what if you start putting the vision down, and you start looking at the enemy? Then you put the vision up, and you read it. Then you put the vision down, and then you put the vision up, and then you put the vision down. You get double vision and double vision causes collision you begin to you begin to collide with doubt you begin to collide with hopelessness you begin to collide with intimidation you begin to collide with rejection you begin to collide double vision causes collision you begin to see Cross-eyed, when you take it down and put it back up, you're cross-eyed. You can't even walk straight no more. Now you're on a crooked path. Because why? You've been looking at the enemy. You've been looking at your vision. You've been looking at the enemy. You've been looking at your vision. You've been looking at the enemy. You've been looking at your vision. And now you're cross-eyed. Now you're confused. Why? Because you doubted what God has spoken to you. You let it down. You let it, you let it down. You let the enemy lie to you and say it's over. When he, God has the original set himself, it's not over. It's not over until the Lord finishes and completes what he has spoken. It's not over. When John was in the prison, he began to doubt that that was the Lord. Why? Because he couldn't see him. When the 12 spies went into the land of Canaan, 10 spies came back with a bad report. Why? Because they seen the giants. So John lost vision by what he didn't see, and the 10 spies lost vision by what they did see. So what does that tell me, people of God? Don't go by what you see. Don't go by what you can see. But go by what the word of God has spoken unto you. Don't go by what you see. Don't go by what you can see. But go by what God has spoken unto you. You know why the enemy comes with striking blows? Have you ever been struck in the head so hard that you felt like you were going to faint? It began to make you weary. What happens before you faint? You lose your vision. He comes to strike you so you can faint, so you can lose your vision. If he's coming with blow after blow after blow, hold on to your vision. Hold on to your purpose. 
What have they prophesied to you? What has God spoken into you? What have you dreamed about? What has been in your heart? What have you cried about over and over? Hold on to your vision. I told him I wasn't going to be long today, and I really meant it. (laughs) I said, Pastor, gave me a short notice. I got a short word. (laughs) So let's all stand, amen. Let the church arise. Let the spirit of John be upon this church that you go and prepare a way for the coming of the Lord. Let the spirit of John be upon this church that you go and prepare a way for the coming of the Lord. Now I'm going to do an altar call and this is for those that have lost their vision. This is for those that have become confused and had double vision and had a collision. This is for those that have laid it down and felt like it was broken and it was no more. This is for you. This is for those that say, well, I don't have a vision yet. Come up to the altar, amen. But before you come, before anybody moves, I want to say this. Um, this week we had a tragic death. Um, my, my best friend Minerva's uh, daughter's fiancé, Anthony, they were to be married. He got killed in a motorcycle accident. 25 years old, uh, we, me and Lydia worked with, with him. I worked with the kid, over, I think about three years, and I loved that kid. And it was really hard, hard on us. But this is the good news. One day I used to take him home, and I used to, um, he wanted to give me gas, but I'd say, no, don't pay me gas money. You remember a scripture, and that's how you'll repay me. And he would laugh, and he did remember some scriptures. But one day we were driving in the car, and I said, Anthony, Have you ever received the Lord? And he looked at me. And I said, have you ever asked him into your heart and to forgive you for your sins? And he said, no. And I said, well, you want to, Anthony? And then he goes, well, right now? And I said, well, why not? So without hesitation, Anthony and I said the sinner's prayer. What wisdom that young man had that didn't hesitate and with sincerity Ask the Lord to forgive him for his sins and to come into his heart. Now I know that he is with, Anthony King is now with the King of Glory. And now, and I know that. So, if anybody here has not received the Lord Jesus Christ into their heart, you have not said, Father, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. If there's anybody here that has not said the sinner's prayer, Raise up your hand. Is there anybody in here? Because God never promised, amen. Is that a hand right there? Is that two hands right there? Amen. Come up, come up to the altar. With wisdom. That was wisdom that you used right now doing that. Is there anybody else here? I'm after souls like never before. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Is there anybody else here? So, so lift up your hands. And if you've never received the Lord, and this is your first time, the next step is to find a home church. This is a great home church. But you have to find a home church so you can continue to hear the word of God. Amen. So lift up your hands. And church, let's all say it with them. Father, Father we, come we come before you in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Lord, We ask for forgiveness of our sins and to come into our heart. Father, fill me with the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. And then, now this is an altar call for vision. If you want to come up, go go ahead and play. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Intercessors, be interceding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Remember, it was just a copy. Just remember, it was just a copy. God has the original. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory, Father. We give you glory, Lord. 
Stretch your hands toward the people. Amen, amen. Father, we come before you, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord God. Father God, everyone that has come to this altar, Lord, everyone, Father God, Lord God, I thank you for the vision that you have given them, Lord, a vision that they will hold on to tightly, Lord, a vision, Father God, that they will read over, a vision that they will believe, Lord, a vision that will be written on the tablets of their heart, Lord God. Thank you for that vision, Lord, that the enemy will not come and snatch it or rob it or try to break it, Lord, that they'll hold on to it so tightly, Lord God, that nothing will snatch it from them, Lord. I thank you for your mighty hand upon them, Lord, as they vision their kids, as they vision their marriage, as they vision their husband, as they vision their wife, as they vision their business, as they vision healing. What is it? Whatever it is, God, that they're visioning right now, Lord, I thank you that it holds in them, Lord. You are assured now, God. Fasten it to them, Lord God. Lord, I cover them in your blood, Father. I speak wholeness over them right now, Lord. We just thank you for this word, God. Oh, let this word, Father God, let them meditate on this word and hold this word dear to their hearts, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all the church say, amen. Amen. We could take our seats for a minute. Did you get ministered to? Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Come on. We can do better than that. You know, uh, Pastor Venetia and Pastor James, uh, they, they, they have a busy schedule ministering along with work and, and, and whatever else of uh, ministry that they have, you know, and, and uh, we want to be a blessing to them. Amen? Yes. Yes. Amen. If I could get that uh, Proverbs 11, 25 up there, please. Proverbs 11, 25. It says, the generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. You know, Pastor Venetia, when she came, comes out to minister, wherever she goes to minister, She's a generous soul. Not just from her pocket, but when she preaches, she pours it all out. I said she pours it all out. And what she does is, is she pours it out onto us so that we may be refreshed. Amen? But as you read, it says the generous soul will be made rich. Amen? And he who water will, will also be watered himself. You know what? Uh, uh, the, the Tapias, they, they have Sustaining Fire Ministries. And the, the, the name of that ministry uh, fits very well. Because wherever this couple goes, the fire gets sustained. Oh, you don't understand. Your fire just got sustained today. Your fire just got turned up a notch today. Your fire has been full-blown now. I said full blown, not even the gas company can give you that kind of power. But the Holy Ghost has, has used Pastor Venetia to encourage us and to lift us up and to help us in our walk. Amen? 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 Are you guys understanding what I'm saying? You know, sustaining fire means that the fire is going to stay. Where sustaining fire goes, it stays. When the ministry goes somewhere else. Amen. So the generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered. Let's water sustaining fire ministries today. Let, let, let's water our brother and our sister's work in the Lord. Let's water so that we may be refreshed also. Because wherever they go, wh whatever they do, when we fund help fund, we bless, we, we give into their ministry, we go with them. Uh, you don't understand what I'm saying. She's going to go worldwide. They're going worldwide. They're going to reach nations. And when they reach the nations, when they go to London, we go with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if I could have the ushers pass out the envelopes, if, 
you need an envelope, uh, uh, give generously so that you can continue to be watered and, 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 and enjoy uh, the, the blessing of God. Amen? Father, we just thank you for the generous hearts, for those that are about to water, God, that they would just pour out a flood of blessing upon our, our sister and our brother, Father. We thank you right now for a, a timely word. We thank you that our vision is refreshed, Father, that, that you can just put your finger on our wallets to release so that you can refill our finances also, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. amen. Fire. 